Feeling at home in the water is not a privilege restricted to extreme athletes. Man has always felt a strong attraction to water, a passion even. An element in which we don't belong, yet which renders us almost weightless. If we're able to move skillfully, it will carry us along, transforming us into swimmers. Not mere bathers, but genuine swimmers, constantly in motion, intent on reaching a destination, even if it's just the other side of the pool. Swimmers are reliant upon themselves, free to evolve their own technique, from paddlers to championship swimmers. Humans aren't supposed to be in the water for that kind of period of time. So it goes against a lot of our instincts. Uh, so I mean, that's one of the draw cards to me swimming. And then, you know, I guess it's kind of my obsession that I have about feeling like I'm at one with the water, that I'm using the water, that I'm part of it, rather than trying to force myself through it. And it's a sensation that I guess most people when they're swimming don't actually get to experience. But you know, when you, you become quite good at swimming, you become fully aware of what the water's actually doing around you. Even early human beings appear to have recognized in swimming an opportunity to distinguish themselves. They were hunters and swimmers. These cave paintings are around 8,000 years old. They derive from a time in which water was everywhere. Even here, covering the area where the Gilf Kabir Desert now lies. Today, scientists regard the Stone Age as the first great era of swimming. It was an indispensable skill for people living near the water, a key asset in the battle for survival, crucial for successful hunting and in overcoming all obstacles. What is clear is that subsequent generations of native populations from across the globe began to master and cultivate the art of swimming as an established practice which has continued until the present day. Myths handed down from all cultures tell of how the gods replenished the water or embodied it. Usually these deities were excellent swimmers, often defeating their foes in the water. Even today, many people attach some metaphysical or spiritual quality to swimming in the open water. I think it's the, it's the feeling of swimming in a river um, and of course after a while you realize that there's a spiritual element to it. I mean, I'm not a really religious person, but um, it, when you swim quite a while, but also if you swim in very beautiful places, you realize that there's quite a spiritual element to swimming. In contrast to its metaphysical aspects, water also conceals real inherent dangers. Creepers, whirlpools, leg cramps. The risks are ever present. The popular horror stories of deadly sea monsters are fueled by the substantiated fear of drowning. What remains is a primordial angst, which still grips those swimming in the open seas. It's not as if I'm scared that some huge octopus will arise from the deep and eat me up. I've grown out of that, but they're calm. Yuck. And I'd never jump into the open seas, never. Our caves, some were shouting for help and in danger of drowning, that I'd have to dive in after them, but usually I'm very afraid. On 
For example, when we were shooting the commercial, there were always two divers underneath me in the water. I threatened to call it off unless I knew that they were there.